Good evening. Welcome to St. Michael. We offer a special welcome to all visitors who are with us this evening and to those viewing the live stream. Printed worship aids are available at the entrances. There will be a memorial mass for Pope Benedict this Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. at the Cathedral of St. Paul. The mass will also be live streamed. You can view it by visiting the cathedral's website. The funeral for Rick Didion will be Tuesday at 11 a.m. The funeral for Millie Zoller will be Thursday at 11 a.m. And the funeral for Mary Jane Keep will be on Friday at 11 a.m. There will be a teen and family mass next Sunday at 5 p.m. Join us for a winter Bible study at the Mass and Eucharist. Several sessions are offered each week. Please see the bulletin for more information and to register. The parish office will be closed on Monday, January 2nd. rise and sing together number 778 in the gather hymnal sing of mary number 778 we'll sing verses one two and four In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And with your spirit. My friends, we gather as a church today to celebrate the octave of Christmas. Our great feasts can't possibly contained in one day, and so be contained in one day. And really, we've been celebrating Christmas Day all throughout this week, the way the church looks at it. Today, under that name of Mary, Mother of God, Ah, uh, but we join with Mother Mary in reflecting on the wonder that our God came to earth to dwell among us. As we gather to pray, we gather also in great sadness, as many of you have heard by now, our, our Pope Emeritus, Pope Benedict, died very early this morning in Rome. 
funeral services are planning. We're going to be offering some special prayers for him later in this Mass, but let's keep him, lift him up in prayer throughout the Mass. As we begin our prayer, we pause as always to reflect on how we have sinned. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. prayer this evening, we also pray for Rick Didion, who died the day after Christmas. His funeral services will be on Tuesday. Millie Zoller, who uh, uh, we are praying for on Christmas Day, the, told some of you, the family told me they were watching the 10 o'clock Mass, and they could just see how much at peace she was when she listened to the Christmas music that day, and how much her husband was made, brought peace with that. And finally, 
Mary Jane Keep, a long-term parishioner who died a few weeks ago, her funeral will be on Friday, if I have it right. So we keep all of them in prayer. I have to add one more thing about the Holy Father. Um, when I was over in Rome, uh, now Castel Gandolfo is a place where you can go as a tourist. It used to be, um, or as a pilgrim, it used to be a place for uh, um, the Holy Father to be in, in privacy. And as we were touring the grounds, it was a beautiful, beautiful gardens. They talked about how after Pope Benedict resigned, stepped down from the papacy, he spent a few months there, and you would see him almost daily walking the grounds. So that would put him at about age 86, praying to God, okay, what are you calling me to do next? And I love that. I tell you so often, never assume that you've got it all down or you know what comes next. God has always new things for us. What a beautiful model of prayer that at 86, he was moving on to something new and open to the call of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O God, who through the fruitful virginity of the Blessed Virgin bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we are found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, This is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. you 
us in his mercy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then so also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told to them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told to them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given to him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. The grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly. We heard that on Christmas Day from Titus chapter 2, verse 11. St. Paul's little letter to Titus is quite brief, takes up about four pages in your Bibles. However, among the four sets of Scripture that are offered for Christmas, it has a very prominent place. For Christmas morning mass, we hear the birth of life, uh, the, about the birth and life of Jesus described as when the kindness and generous love of God, our Savior, appeared. I always love that every year when I hear it. When the kindness and generous love of our God and Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds that we have done, but because of his mercy. 
See, for a few thousand years, my friends, God spoke to us about his kindness, about his love for us. But now in Jesus, he said, let me show you. Let me make it obvious to you. From the Midnight Mass reading, of course, we hear that quote I began with. And today on this octave of Christmas, as I said at the beginning of the Mass, it's a day just to continue that reflecting with Mother Mary on all that has happened in Emmanuel, God with us, in her Son who came to us. And I think this passage that I quoted provides a good way for us to continue that reflection and also maybe to have a starting point for the coming of year, coming year far better than many of those resolutions we often make. Paul says again that Jesus came to teach or train us to live temperately, justly, and devoutly. What if those were our guideposts for 2023? To live temperately is to live with all things in balance. Rather than letting the, the, our lives be driven by giving in to those every passing desire that we have, we strive to practice moderation in all things. Now there are some things that are bad for us, that are truly sinful. But other things, you may remember when I told you that blessed Carlo Acutis, who died at age 15, loved Mario Kart. But he limited himself to one hour a week of playing computer games. Now, we may not be that saintly, but seriously, think about it. How much time do you spend on electronics every week? How many of you can't make it through an hour-long mass without looking at your phone? But I, I, know, I know I have my family, the way we keep up with a lot of things, especially some things going on with my dad now, between... Um, there's both some of the things I love seeing pictures of nieces and nephews and great nieces and nephews on Facebook and then um, we, the, the text chain we have. But it's, it's easy to let those things just suck up so much time. Nothing sinful with taking a little break now and then. And it's sometimes just really wasting time. But again, we strive to have balance, to have moderation in all things we do. So number one, in this year, we can strive, can we strive to have, yes, some time for us, if you will, but probably for most of us, to aim at a little more time for God and a little time for, more time for our neighbor. To live justly at its core means to be aware that everything I do has an impact on my neighbor. Living justly, I see, is living, means living like the Good Samaritan. That is, we should we pray in 2023 that we'll learn to see our neighbor in need a little more often and then realize that my needs at this moment have to give way to the more urgent needs of someone else that God has put in my path. We can't help every person on the face of this earth, but God has a wonderful way of putting those opportunities before us. You know, I so often use that, that phrase. I say, if we're asking, we're thinking somebody should do something, maybe it's us. And now, my, my friends, your generosity to our friends in Chimbote or at the uh, Thanksgiving meal in a bag program and so forth, so you understand that. Or I was just talking to the, the family that runs the toy corner about the incredible impact our giving tree had on the, the incredible need they have there. There are many ways that we, we do extend our, our, our charity to others. But beyond that, let me suggest that a practice that might take us a little further in being just. Being just in the words that we say. That is, can we try, at least to try a little harder, before the words ever leave our lips, Ask, how will this affect my family member, my neighbor, my friend? Not, I mean, I, I get to some people sometimes, well, I really needed to say that. No, we don't need to say anything. Or, I've never, I've never understood this about some of our other Christian friends, where someone will come up to you and say, God put it on my heart to tell you you're a terrible person. 
I mean, some of these things that say people say, God put it on my heart. I, no, that's your, 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 it's your thing. You claim that. Enough of that. <laughs> but could 2023 be a year, for instance, where we stop and think long enough that we stop joining in gossip? Or at least we check out whether something is true and helpful before repeating it? Or where we focus on saying what is kind and what is encouraging? And most of the time, leave a lot of those things that come up here unsaid. Part of being living justly. And finally, to live devoutly is to give God my best moments every day. It is to move beyond a few rushed prayers first thing in the morning or a few tired words before I fall asleep at night and seek to let God into every moment of my day. While our prayers will always be at least a little imperfect, maybe a little distracted, we seek to love God so much that we can't go then more than a few hours, if even that, without turning our heart to him and turning to his love. And above all, let's strive to be at that point where the Eucharist, the Mass, is no longer an obligation or something we have to do or we have to confess if we don't get there, but rather, this becomes the highlight of our week. This place we are fed with God's word and sacrament to live more temperately, justly, and devoutly throughout the rest of the week. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's never-ending love and mercy, we name our needs this day. The song response can be found in your worship aid. For Pope Benedict, who was called to the heavenly kingdom by the Lord, may he rejoice forever in the liturgy of heaven. We pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Bring peace to earth again. For world leaders, that on this world day of peace, all nations may find a way to achieve peace through nonviolence, we pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer, bring peace to earth again. For all who are suffering, that God will sustain their spirits, relieve their suffering, and give them hope, we pray to the Lord. For all parents, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, 
that they will be strengthened as they inspire their children to embrace the teachings of Christ. We pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Bring peace to earth again. For God's blessing on the new year, that God will renew the gifts of the Spirit within us and inspire us with new ways to show God's love and compassion to others. We pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Bring peace to earth again. For all who are ill, that God will bring healing to the sick, comfort to the lonely, strength to caregivers, and health to all of us. We pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Bring peace to earth again. For the faithful departed, including Pope Benedict, Donna Goblerish, mother of Greg Goblerish, Millie Zoller, mother of John Zoller, Rick Didion, that God's face will shine upon them and give them eternal peace in God's presence. We pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Bring peace to earth again. For all the intentions we hold in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Bring peace to earth again. Now I invite us to please kneel as we offer the traditional prayers to the Holy Father upon learning on his, about his death. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are about with women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, for the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us sing together number 387 in the Gather Hymnal, What Child Is This? Number 387. Sleep. 
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we rejoice in completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, bless and glorify your name on the solemnity of the motherhood of the blessed ever Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread And drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter in my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
communion song is number 772 in the Gather Hymnal, Ave Maria, number 772. Let us pray. We have rejoice, receive this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life. For we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever Virgin Mary, mother of your son and mother of the church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before we go, just first, one more little story. I was with a dear friend and classmate, Father Jim Livingston, who's been out here uh, before for masses of healing. And uh, Thursday, he 
uh, was presided at the Mass of Christian burial, burial for his mother, Betty, 99 years old. And he talked in part about what a consolation it was that Betty went to be with the Lord just as Advent was giving way to Christmas. It was the day that we proclaim the Magnificat. And he said, what a gift it was that as, as we sang, uh, Mary sang of the greatness of the Lord, his mother was beginning just to see that wonder herself. But he, he said as a part of that, and this really touched me, it's so simple, and yet, um, he said, Advent is the season where we seek to deepen our desire to be in the kingdom one day. Christmas is our season where we seek to deepen our faith, to our, our faith that indeed it is so wondrous that our God would come and walk among us. And I was sitting there thinking, we're so busy during December that maybe we didn't do so well with either one. And maybe January is a better time and what we have left is Christmas season. Think about that. Do you long to be with Jesus in heaven one day? Are you still overwhelmed with wonder that our God would come and become a tiny child, become one just like us? Something for your prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. I want a strong amen to each of these invocations. May God, the source and origin of all blessing, grant you grace, pour out his blessing in abundance, and keep you safe from harm throughout the coming year. Amen. May he give you integrity in the faith, endurance in hope, and perseverance in charity with holy patience to the end. Amen. May he order your days and your deeds in his peace, grant your prayers in this and every place, and lead you happily to eternal life. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to announce the good news through your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 361 in the Gather Hymnal, Angels We Have Heard on High. Number 361.